Get ready for the battle of the century! On this side, we have the famous, the popular, and the ever-flowing Hydrogen Water! On this side, we have the newcomer, the rookie, the gassy. Hydrogen Inhalation! It's going to be a fight to the end! Who's going to win? You have to tune in on this episode of H2 Minutes! Are you excited yet? Special shout out to my son, Ty. It was his idea to make the video, so I told him he can help with it and do the intro. Ty had a great idea because I get this question a lot. Be sure to wait to the end where my middle son, Raiden, does his part. People ask me all the time which one is better and which one they should invest in. But before we get into this battle, we have to thank our patrons once again for their support. It's because of you guys, especially our advanced patrons, that we can make these videos. We believe that the hydrogen industry desperately needs these videos to clear up a lot of the confusion that's out there. You can help us too by becoming a patron, of course, or sharing our videos or giving a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel will help us a ton. Also, check out the description below for a lot of other stuff, including sources for this video and where to find hydrogen products we recommend. So let's get back to the battle. First, we gotta lay some groundwork here. Our video here will help you understand what hydrogen water is and it will help you understand this video. Likewise, this video will have important information for what we will be discussing today. Make sure you check those out if you haven't already. Also, before we get into the battle, we have to add that we will be referring to where the market is right now. So it's the middle of 2021 and the hydrogen industry changes often. Just in case you are watching this and some of the things that we say don't apply anymore, we want to be clear we are talking about as of now. Now we're gonna go through some of the positives and negatives of each method so we can see how they look head to head. Of course, we have to mention the obvious differences between the two. With hydrogen water, you are drinking a liquid and with hydrogen inhalation, you are breathing a gas. Pretty self-explanatory, but just that fact alone gives us some initial positives and negatives of each method. Hydrogen water, for example, in general, is far more portable in the sense that you can drink it on the go. You can fill up a water bottle and take it anywhere, or you can fill up a glass and take it to a chair or a table to drink it, or you can choose from a wide range of portable products. Unlike hydrogen inhalation, where you pretty much have to sit there and breathe for 30 minutes or more. Give that one to hydrogen water. But on that note, breathing hydrogen gas is super easy. So a little rest while sitting and breathing is definitely not a bad thing. You can watch TV, read a book, work on your computer, catch up on social media, or you can watch H2 Minute videos. All while breathing a gas is very helpful for your body. For instance, my wife likes to inhale hydrogen gas while working, and I like to inhale while resting before bed. It's very easy to incorporate inhalation into a routine and multitask with it. One for inhalation. But like I said, you're gonna need to breathe for at least 30 minutes depending on the type of H2 inhalation system you have and its flow rate. But let's face it, sometimes our lives do not allow for extra time to sit in one place. Hydrogen inhalation may be a drawback for some with busy lives. Let's give a point to hydrogen water because of that. On top of that, drinking a glass of water is fairly quick compared to breathing hydrogen. It will definitely not take up a chunk of your day. Another one for hydrogen water. However, you do have to take the time to consume the water. And depending on how much you need to drink, it is not always the easiest thing to do. Some people, well, probably a lot of people, really struggle to drink the amount of water they need each day. And in that case, inhalation would be much easier and more reasonable of a choice for them. Not to mention the obvious struggle that comes when you drink more water. What goes in must come out. That time you are saving by not having to sit and breathe hydrogen, you might make up in the bathroom. Just saying. And even more than that, there are health issues and situations that would limit the amount of water a person can drink. If someone has kidney or heart issues, they might not be able to drink as much water. Or some disabilities or diseases might also hinder that administration method. And that would make inhalation the winner on that note. However, hydrogen water has a double benefit. And that is you can ingest molecular hydrogen at the same time as hydrating yourself. Drinking water and being hydrated is absolutely vital for our bodies. So having something like hydrogen gas and water that 
you should already be drinking anyway is a major plus. Or I should say that is a major point. Now there are some aspects of this battle that are more dependent on the products in the hydrogen market as we know it. Hydrogen inhalation systems in general are more expensive, especially the ones with higher quality and higher gas flow rates. It's not easy to try hydrogen inhalation legitimately without spending at least $1,000. Another point for hydrogen water, but you do get much much more hydrogen gas for your money. For instance, a hydrogen inhalation system that produces 300 milliliters per minute of pure H2 for 30 minutes will deliver or provide 9,000 milliliters or 744 milligrams of H2. While drinking 500 milliliters of hydrogen rich water at a concentration of 1.6 milligrams per liter or ppm, will provide 10 milliliters or 0.8 milligrams of H2. Therefore, the inhalation session will provide 930 times more H2. Keep in mind, I'm talking about the delivery of H2 to the human body, not the final blood or cellular concentration. Regardless, as you can see, hydrogen inhalation provides or produces far more hydrogen gas. That is definitely a point for inhalation. With hydrogen inhalation system, there's an option to bubble or infuse hydrogen gas into water too and make hydrogen water that way. You can just stick the cannula into a glass of water. Or for faster and better results, you can use a diffusion stone with some systems to make your hydrogen water. So I would say this is another point for inhalation. Even though with using that method, you're only gonna be able to produce 1.6 milligrams per liter of PPM, tops. Now with hydrogen water, there are so many options. There are bigger systems and there are smaller systems. There are portable hydrogen water bottles and pitchers. There are tablets and there are prepackaged hydrogen waters. There are even flavored beverages and teas with hydrogen available for purchase. So the range of options for hydrogen water is definitely another plus and another point. And to add to that point, which I kind of mentioned earlier, hydrogen water generally is cheaper than hydrogen inhalation. If you are wanting to give it a try to start out, it's definitely possible with hydrogen water without spending a ton of money. Definitely give that one to hydrogen water. But something to keep in mind with hydrogen water is that the concentration of dissolved hydrogen gas in the water is of great importance when talking about hydrogen water. According to the research on hydrogen water, it definitely seems like there is a minimum dose and many disease models are dose dependent. This means that there is a minimum level that you should be ingesting if you want to give yourself the best possible chance of receiving the therapeutic benefits. The research is suggesting at least one to three milligrams per day of hydrogen gas may be needed for humans to experience the benefits. This is super important because every hydrogen water product is going to provide different concentrations of dissolved hydrogen gas. So it's vital to know, better yet, verify the dissolved concentration so you can figure out how much you're actually ingesting. And the concentrations of some hydrogen water products are so low that you would need to drink one to two gallons each day to hit the therapeutic suggested dose. That is a lot of water. And for that reason, we'll give the point to hydrogen inhalation. By the way, I have a calculator on my website that'll allow you to plug in the details of your hydrogen water and will tell you how much you need to drink per day. I will have that link in the description below. Back to the battle. A couple more things before we get into the studies. A benefit of inhalation is when you breathe hydrogen, you will get more hydrogen gas into your body per day than you ever could drinking it. Not only that, but depending on the time frame of your inhalation session, the gas is gonna stay in your body a lot longer than with hydrogen water. But the obvious also must be said, which that is hydrogen gas is of course flammable. Hydrogen gas is flammable from four to 75% and many hydrogen inhalation products produce the gas in this range. This adds obvious safety precautions to these systems that hydrogen water systems do not have. Hydrogen gas is not flammable when dissolved into water, so in general, hydrogen water is safer than hydrogen inhalation. But now I have to say to those for whom the thought of getting a hydrogen inhalation system just went out the window, H2 dissipates into the atmosphere very rapidly and is diluted to non-combustible levels. It would have to be ignited right at the very tip of the cannula or output to even combust. And this would more than likely have to be intentional for that to happen. Also, most inhalation systems are built with safety mechanisms that make the possibility of an accident less likely. So all of that was based on my perspective and seven years of experience in the industry. With a vast amount of products I've seen and tested, and of course, using hydrogen both ways for a number of years. Now let's get to what the research has to say about these two administration methods and their advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with hydrogen water. Hydrogen water appears to stimulate, or regulate, or influence the expression of ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone secretion in the stomach, as well as leptin, which is the hormone that makes you feel full, both of which are secondary messengers that may induce therapeutic effects for the brain and other organs indirectly outside of H2's direct modulation effects. Whereas inhalation of molecular hydrogen may not have 
have the same effect because it takes a different administration route via the lungs. Hydrogen gas in water has time to act on your stomach, intestine, and liver before it travels to the lungs to be administered to the rest of the body via the arterial system. Because of hydrogen water's administration route, it may have advantages for these systems and organs, such as the gut flora. To quote, thus the consumption of hydrogen-rich water for two months might play a role in modulating the gut flora for athletes based on its selective antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activities. And another one, our data demonstrates the possibility that hydrogen water administration affects the gut microbial composition and that it has beneficial health effects in terms of cholesterol metabolism and liver protection. We did a video explaining more about hydrogen in the gut, so check that video out too. Here's another source demonstrating how hydrogen water may have a beneficial effect on obesity, diabetes, and metabolism because of its effects on the liver. Moreover, long-term drinking of H2 water enhanced energy expenditure to improve obesity and diabetes in mice accompanied by increased expression of FGF21 by an unknown mechanism. So this may be one plausible reason why hydrogen water might be more effective than hydrogen inhalation in some cases or disease models. Furthermore, H2 water seems to be more potent than inhalation at influencing these secondary messengers, which leads to greater gene expression of these molecules and others. This is possibly due to hydrogen water's rapid intermittent exposure or pulse effect. Here it says hydrogen rich water generally shows a more prominent effect than hydrogen gas. Although the amount of hydrogen taken up by hydrogen water is roughly 100 times less than that given by hydrogen gas. Now, here is an interesting quote. Further data analysis show that 72% of hydrogen in drinking hydrogen water is exhausted from the body with breathing. 0.1% of hydrogen is excreted through the skin of the whole body, and it is estimated that at least 20% of the hydrogen remains in the human body. So after hydrogen gas makes it to the lungs via H2 water, only approximately 20 to 28 percent of the hydrogen ingested makes it to the rest of the body. Now you can see why it's so important to get enough. Furthermore, this quote touches on the fact that hydrogen water may not be the most effective way to administer a dose of H2 to the whole body. Despite these advantages of gastric administration, there are some drawbacks to this route of administration. Hydrogen might be lost in the stomach or intestines as it tends to evaporate in water and it is difficult to control its concentration and absorption. So now let's look at hydrogen inhalation. Hydrogen inhalation appears to be a better delivery system of molecular hydrogen to the circulatory system, and it yields higher concentrations of molecular hydrogens to cells, tissues, and organs such as the brain as compared to hydrogen water. Here is a quote. For the delivery of H2 to the medically needed area, H2 needs to be in the blood first. The presence of H2 was well demonstrated during H2 administration by inhalation in our case cases, and the level was much higher than the level with intravenous administration as reported previously. This may suggest some advantage of H2 gas inhalation as compared to intravenous administration of H2 enriched solution. Now that quote was obviously comparing hydrogen inhalation to the hydrogen IV method they use more in studies. But it shows that hydrogen inhalation is a way to deliver hydrogen to the blood and it results in higher levels. Here is another quote. In comparison, hydrogen containing air shows superior distribution of hydrogen to both atrial and arterial blood, while hydrogen water increased hydrogen concentration by 10x in the atrial blood compared to that of the arterial blood. Inhalation of H2 gas is one of the most straightforward therapeutic methods and provides the largest amount of H2 gas in a time-dependent manner compared to other ingestion methods because the maximum tissue and blood concentration in H2 gas inhalation are low while their area under the curve is extremely high compared to other administration routes. Inhalation allows people to inhale or ingest higher milligrams of hydrogen gas per day than drinking hydrogen rich water. Inhalation appears to be better suited for traumatic injuries, acute disorders, or diseases, such as TBIs, heart attacks, cardiac arrest, strokes, etc. Inhaled hydrogen gas is most suitable for defense against acute oxidative stress in emergency situations due to its rapid mechanism of action. So as you can see, there are unique advantages to both methods, and many have made the case for each one being better than the other. So that will bring me to my final point, the point that tops all the other points. Are you ready for this point? Let's start with this quote. We demonstrated that hydrogen responsive genes are divided into four groups, genes that respond favorably to hydrogen gas, 
those that respond exclusively to hydrogen water, those that respond to both hydrogen gas and water, and those that respond only to the simultaneous administration of gas and water. So some genes in our body respond just to hydrogen gas via hydrogen inhalation. Some respond just to hydrogen water. Some respond to both in conjunction to one another. And some respond to both administered simultaneously. Here's the deal. H2 water and inhalation have different pharmacokinetics due to different administration routes. Ultimately, there appears to be evidence that supports drinking hydrogen water and breathing hydrogen gas at the same time or in conjunction with one another might be a better approach or provides a greater therapeutic effect on gene expression than doing both therapies separately. And for my final quote, finally, we evaluated whether the changes in gene expression were influenced by the route of H2 administration and found that the combination of both hydrogen water and hydrogen containing air had the most potent effect on signaling pathways and gene expression in systemic organs suggesting that H2 may act not only through dose-dependent mechanism, but also through a complex molecular network. Now, I must say that there is much more research that needs to be done regarding these two administration methods. In my opinion, it is far too early to make claims about which one is better. But as of now, the research is suggesting that both have their unique advantages. So this is why my family utilizes both methods. Hydrogen water? And... <laughs> and it's also what we recommend to people who ask this question. So I guess this is a battle where there are two winners. Let me know in the comments if that was the result you were expecting. Which one have you tried or have you tried both? How do you H2? I'll let Raiden take it from here. Shout out to our Patreon. Thank you for supporting our family. Don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to this channel. <laughs> and that was your knockout dose of H2 in minutes.